So these are the pickups that Brandon ordered uh, for me to drop into his uh, CS9. Uh, they're from England, kind of new to me. Uh, he also has these uh, cream tone replacement rotomatics that have been sort of prematurely aged, right, to kind of look the part, I suppose. So we'll be dropping those in and then switching the covers over. I do have to ream out that headstock, and uh, Brandon's aware of that, to install those rotomatics. Uh, this thing will be just like the Beano guitar, I guess, that Clapton used. That, that was the idea, to sort of go with uh, the exact duplicate, maybe a little fancier top than the picture I saw Clapton's, but... Uh, okay, we have removed the original press fit ferrules. We're going to ream the headstock out for these uh, aged Grovers that Brandon provided me with. So what we're after here is a beautiful press fit. Sort of checking this first one as I go. And still just a little tiny bit tight. That's what we want. So the masking tape is my depth gauge. I've got good sight lines here. I'm coming right in nice and square to get that perfect fit. No looseness, no tightness. There we go. Good. Still a little tight. I don't want to force anything here. Beautiful. Okay, we got our chaser wire. I fed that through. I put that first layer of shrink wrap over that joint. And our second layer of shrink wrap is going to go right over top. We're going to cover up this sort of clump of solder because that's going to catch on something. So this will allow us to pull that wire through. 
So now we just gently pull that through. Just flip that face down, get a better look. So we've pulled that through, that's our neck pickup lead. This is our splash guard to make sure that we don't have a little flits of solder onto that beautiful finish. I always wait for like a 10 count just to make sure that that solder is rock solid. There we go. Now they've already tinned the wire, uh, so that's beautiful. Just kind of solder that into place or ground. And again, give it a 10 count before you let go. And that is our neck pickup. Flip it over. Same deal again. We just put our first layer of heat shrink and our second layer of heat shrink. First layer over top. Our larger heat shrink. It'll cover this blob that they put on for the uh, back of the pot ground. Once again, got our splash guard in place. Okay, I'll reach in underneath and then so we'll just tug that through. Tug that wire through. Drop our bridge pickup into place. It's funny, these screws actually have rust on them, just like the real thing, I guess. Very easy to strip or break these screws. Just snug them down nice and easy. They don't need a lot of torque. Just holding that little plastic ring in place. And that is it. Got our splash guard once again to make sure we don't flick solder onto the finish. So we'll clip this wire back because we really don't need all of that length to reach our destination. Okay, I've unraveled that shield with a dental pick and we'll just cut that back. Put that splash shield back into place while we tin that lead. Kind of fold that up. Make sure you don't touch anything with that iron. Lots of stuff to melt and burn there. That lug needs a little bit of extra solder on there. Okay. So we'll tin that ground wire. And it's a done deal.